Good morning everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and my craft table. I am so excited about today. In my last video, I showed you how to make some gorgeous cards using your Cricut Joy glitter cardstock, regular cardstock, and your Cricut Joy pens. So I will um, link this up here in the top corner for you in case you haven't seen that. But these are super beginner friendly cards. Well, they inspired me greatly. I have had this patterned vinyl in my stash for quite a while. And I have been dying for a way to use this patterned vinyl. And what I came up with is when I was making my Christmas cards, I was kind of amiss that I don't really have a lot of patterned Christmas paper. And then I got to thinking, why not make my own patterned Christmas paper? So I have this adhesive vinyl here and I'm going to show you how to partner adhesive vinyl with regular cardstock to make some really gorgeous Christmas cards basically creating your own pattern paper without actually having to have cardstock that is um, with Christmas designs. So let's talk about the supplies that I've used for this project and then I will show you everything in design space and I will be linking this design link uh, down in the description for you in case you would like to recreate these cards. Um, I've got everything set up ready to go for you in Design Space, and I thought it would be great to share it with you. Let me dive right in. Let me just show you some of the materials that I have used. So I have three types of patterned adhesive vinyl here. I have got everything cut out, but you will need some, I'm using 110 pound um, cardstock. You can use any color you want that coordinates with your pattern vinyl. I'm just using white cardstock today. And then I have um, some glitter cardstock that I used for a sentiment and some black cardstock as well. And I'll explain that more later. Then as far as tools, I have my standard go-tos. Scissors, craft glue, bone folder to fold, which I've already done, my Cricut Joy pen, and I always keep handy my weeding tool, a little spatula to remove elements from the craft mat, a um, embellishment placer with a wax tip, and then my trusty um, tweezers. Boy, I'm getting tongue-tied here this morning. And I do have some little dew, dew drop embellishments. I don't know if I'm going to add these to the cards at the end. It'll just depend on how everything looks at the end. And I also have some enamel dots. So I thought maybe as the cards unfold, we'll decide at the end if they need a little bit of extra. If not, they're going to be good to go as, as they are. And, um, oh, another thing I did use was my brayer, and that was for making sure that everything was nicely adhered to my Cricut Joy mat. You can use any of the Cricut machines for this project, but I did go ahead and use my Joy today simply because cards are small and my Joy definitely gets the job done. So let's head over to Design Space. Let me show you the card elements that I've put together for you and then we will come back to the overhead camera where I have everything already prepped and ready to go and we will get the cards put together. So here in Design Space, I already have everything ready to go for this project if you would like to recreate this as well. Let me walk you through the elements because there are certain things you will need to hide before you go to your uh, make screen. So let me just explain to you what we have going on. First of all, I have a pink text at the top of each of the three cards. The pink text is simply just a way to remind you to hide not only the pink text before you go to the make screen, but the element within each of these cards that needs to be hidden because it doesn't need to be cut out. So for instance, this first card right here, I am using a white card base 
This is the 110 pound card base. It is an A2 size, so it is four and a quarter by five and a half. And this is going to um, be ready to go. I don't need to cut this out with the Cricut. Um, we are going to cut out three layers of Mary with black cardstock, and we're going to just glue them on top of each other to add some dimension to the card. And then this red box right here, now this is the inspiration piece for this entire project. This is the adhesive vinyl that I have adhered to a piece of cardstock and had the Cricut cut out um, for me. And the tree design that you see here, this was done with a splice. And I moved that spliced image over here on top of just a white panel. So for this particular first card here, you are going to want to hide that right there and then you're going to want to go into the red where it says red white tree you're going to go into that layer and you're going to hide the white card base so this will be your patterned vinyl that you have placed onto cardstock and brayer down really well and then put that onto your mat so then you'll have your cardstock elements all of that will be cut out. For the next card, again, you're going to hide the pink text, and then you wanna come down to where it says white and red tree. Open up that panel there, and you do not need to cut out the red tree. This red tree right here is basically what comes out of the pattern vinyl slash cardstock layer that you're going to cut. So I'm just placing it on top of a white card panel. So I'm going to hide that right there. This particular image right here is a A2 size card panel and it says Merry Christmas. This is a draw feature so you will need a Cricut Joy pen or maker, whichever machine you're using and any color that you're using as well. So we're gonna hide that tree. And then for our third card, that is the O oh Christmas tree card over here in your layers. So again, you want to hide the pink text and then you want to go into the layers themselves for that particular card, go all the way down and you need to hide the white card. Now, there is a caveat. If you need your Cricut machine to cut these white card panels for you, please by all means do not hide the white card bases. Go ahead and let your machine cut them. I tend to keep a bunch of card bases pre-cut and ready to go at all times, so I just use my guillotine paper trimmer to take care of those when I have a few minutes here and there and they're ready to go. I don't need my maker to necessarily cut those out. So I hid that one, and then you'll see where we have three different types of patterned vinyl. This is what we're gonna cut out, those designs I showed you earlier. And then here on this particular word sentiment, oh Christmas tree, the black cardstock is a shadow layer, and the white is a glitter cardstock, and I cut out an extra layer or two of O oh Christmas Tree again in just regular white cardstock. And then I will be layering these all on top of each other with some craft glue so that we can create some dimension for our card. The only thing that you need to do when you go to your make screen is for some reason, mine, mine always defaults to the four and a half by 12. If you don't have the longer mat, you can go ahead and change all of them to the four and a half by six and a half. So this first mat here, the I did let the Joy cut out the size of the card panel and write the sentiment on there with my pen. So you can see where it says pen and then basic cut. Then for my second mat, again, four and a half by six and a half. These are the O Christmas trees. 
Now I will tell you I did this in two runs. I did one run where I just did the glitter cardstock. So you would need to choose that as far as your materials are concerned. And then when it was done cutting, I ran this mat one more time with just plain white cardstock. Okay, and then for my, <clears throat> for my third mat, again, I had to change the size to four and a half by six and a half. Now this just has one tiny little tree. So what I did is I turned it to the side and all of these little vinyl pieces, um, I really just needed like two inches wide. I did two inches wide by three inches tall. And then what I did is I went to mat number five and I clicked on the three little dots and I moved that to the gray mat. Then I went down to the sixth mat. I left this large tree here where it is, but the tiny little tree, again, I clicked on the three dots and I moved it to the gray mat. Once everything was there, I simply turned all of them on their side and I placed one where the star was at the mark of three and then this one here at the bottom, I just let it go all the way to the bottom. So I had plenty of room for my three different um, pattern vinyls and I cut them all out at one time. That was very easy. The next mat is our black mat. This is our black cardstock. And again, I just changed it to four and a half by six and a half. And then I just moved the three Marys over just slightly. I like to give myself a little room and then placed my cardstock on there, let the machine cut that out. Mats five and five will actually go away completely once you start cutting. And then with mat number six. Now this again is the patterned vinyl that was the inspiration piece. I basically uh, laid down the pattern vinyl onto some cardstock and I placed it on the mat here, changed it to four and a half by six and a half. And I had the Cricut not only cut out the size of the panel that I needed, but it also cut this particular tree. Now, when I go to assemble the cards, this particular tree right here will get placed on the other card panel, the white one. Now, because the vinyl is on top of cardstock, there is nothing, once you pull this up, it's just like a piece of patterned cardstock. There's no sticky on the bottom, so you would need craft glue for that. And that is all for design space elements. I'm going to go ahead and cancel. But again, I will leave this link down in the description box so that you can recreate this project if you are so inspired. Let's head back, back to the overhead camera and start assembling these cards. The first thing I need to do is talk to you about your card bases. I am an A2 size girl. I love A2 size cards, so they are four and a quarter by five and a half. And you have a couple of options. I like the top folding A2 sized cards. So what I tend to do is I take my eight and a half by 11 card stock and I cut it right down the middle at four and a quarter. Then that's gonna give me a four and a quarter by 11 size piece of paper, which I then just fold in half, matching up the corners. And then I grab my bone folder and I just press it down and I go in both directions. Okay, so now I have my A2 top folding card base. The other type of A2 card panel that you can make is your eight and a half by 11. So if you cut it at five and a half right here, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the eight and a half and you're going to fold it over, matching the corners, again, pressing with your bone folder, and this will give you two types of cards. Well, actually, both of them give you two types of cards. So with this particular one here, you can have a side opening 
This will be a, a portrait, okay, or it can be landscape. If you use landscape, which we will use for one of the carts today, then your height is four and a quarter and your width is five and a half. And then it will still be a top folding card like this. Or you can use it like this and have a regular side opening card, okay? This top folding card here, you can always turn it, landscape, and that means you will have a four and a half by five, or four and a quarter by five and a half, but it will open like this. So it really just depends on whether you want top folding cards or you want side folding cards. And I tend to like the top folding cards because you can then display them like a piece of art and I just think they're so fun. Okay, so that is all I need to tell you about card faces. The very first thing that we're going to do on the first card that has the patterned paper we created using cardstock and adhesive vinyl, what I need to do is I need to take my sentiment, and this is just black cardstock and so what I'm doing is I had my Cricut cut this out three times and I'm simply going to have um, a pair of tweezers here and a little bit of cr liquid craft glue and very, very little, little bit goes a long way. I'm just going to put some dots around. And what I'm doing is I'm going to layer these pieces. And this is going to have my sentiment have dimension without having to use the dimensional pop dots because that would be so, can you imagine having to cut your pop dots down that small? The liquid glue gives you float time so that you can line everything up and press down as you get everything lined up perfectly, super easy, and you really don't need a lot of liquid glue, like very, very little. Okay, so there are two layers, and now we will do our third layer. Okay, and then I am just, I'm just going to let this sit over here under an acrylic block Okay, so here is our A2 card panel and the card base. This is going to be the card panel. You start taking this off and bend your mat, you might get little pieces like this. These are the insides of the loops and you do want to save those. They may or may not stay on your mat. Okay, so I have one here and I'm just going to pop that down on my mat. You should have a total of three, four, five, six. So I'm just going to take my little tool here and press those down and the star, I'm gonna put that down. And this just comes right up and you can see on the back where all I did was layer the cardstock with the adhesive vinyl, brayered it down really well, and this is just like a thick piece of cardstock. Super, super fun. Just grab my Misty, which you don't have to have this particular tool, but if you do, it is helpful for lining everything up. And then if you don't, you can just use a piece of washi and hold it down on your mat. So a lot of times I will do that. Now what's going to happen with, I'm going to be putting this card panel just like this. really want this wide margin all the way around like that. And then the Mary would be right here. Now what we could do is cut off a little bit more from this base and then we would have Mary down here in the bottom. We would just trim off probably about a quarter of an inch and that would then have the Mary on the white. I actually think I like that. So let me grab my little trimmer. Okay, so between the, between the star 
and the edge. This is about an eighth of an inch. So I think what I'm going to do is I am going to do the same thing. Okay, so probably about right here. It'll be four inches tall and three and a half wide. That sounds really good to me. I'm gonna put this in here, I've kind of made my little mark. Four inches tall. I'm just gonna slice that down, just like that. You certainly do not have to cut this at all. You could even do the Mary out of white itself, and then you could leave a white Mary on top of that bottom piece. And so we're going to put the panel like this and then like so. I think that is going to look great. So I just have a very inexpensive roll of adhesive double-sided tape. So I'm going to use my non-stick scissors and I'm gonna just, again, using the grid lines of my glass mat, I'm just gonna cut a couple little and basically what I'm doing is putting the tape here this foam tape so that we don't have any sagging mentioned this will create a shadow layer through the um, through the cutout okay, so now that I have all of my um, adhesive papers off I'm going to turn this around and we're going to get this placed here. And I'm going to be centering this up as best as I can. That looks great. Let me move this. And then you can see it's got like a little bit of a shadow layer. It looks so good. Oh, I am so pleased. This has been in my brain for about three days. And I'm so glad that this is working out. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab my tweezers and I'm not going to put this, this is three layers of cardstock. I'm just gonna let this be the way it is. It already has dimension. And I'm just going to use my glue again, placing little tiny dots. And then we're gonna get this glued into place. Now, I'm pretty good at, you know, lining things up and pretty straight. If you are not, one thing you can do is you can always purposefully make things diagonal. And then you don't have to worry about things being straight. Okay, so. And that is another thing about the liquid glue is that you do have a little bit of float time. So let me just check this out. Okay, so this is card number one. For card number two, um, we are going to be placing this, this tree and the little inner elements and the star on to this card panel. Now, I actually decided at the last second that um, I didn't want to have just a plain white card, so I grabbed an A2 size uh, card base in black. Okay, so you can see that here. And then I did cut this down a little bit. Now, I think what I'll do for for you is I will resize this panel in Design Space before I link it to this video so that you can have a little bit wider margin between the words and the edge of the white panel and then you will be able to place your white panel down on your black cardstock like this okay and it'll be a little have a little it'll be sized a lot better for you so I will do that for you in design space I'm going to place 
my star up at the top and then I'm going to replace these little guys back in here where they go and then I'm going to show you the coolest trick you will need some paper transfer tape to do this you could use painters tape you could use washi um, I'm going to use my paper transfer tape so here is my tree got the star got the inners everything so what I'm gonna do is I am going to get a small piece of this paper transfer tape I don't need very much and I'm going to place this on top of the tree and I'm going to pull it up all at one time and then I'm going to flip it over and put the glue on the back and then I am going to lay it all down on my card panel all at one time. You don't really need your scraper tool to burnish it down. I'm just using my finger. I don't want um, I don't want it to be crazy. And then you may have to help the tiny little insides to stay down. And so there is my Christmas tree. I'm going to go ahead and add my gl liquid glue. I use this paper transfer tape and it is from Expressions Vinyl. I absolutely love so much of their stuff. But anyway, it's a big roll of paper transfer tape. So think of like a huge roll of masking tape essentially. And I use it anytime I do paper projects that require a gentler um, transfer. So I'm basically lining up the top of the star with coming in two inches. I think that's good. Okay. And then I'm just going to use my finger to burnish all that down. And I try not to get too much of the tape. You know, I try not to burnish the, this part of the tape. I just try and really go over the design and that's usually why I just kind of use my finger a lot of times. And then you want to take your time and you want to very gently pull up your paper transfer tape. The glue is keeping the tree and all of the tiny little elements onto the cardstock. But this transfer tape allows you to move the entire thing all at one time instead of having to piece it, which you could absolutely do. And there you go. Look how amazing that is. I'm just going to let that sit for just a minute while I get my card base. Okay, so I have placed my card base down in my Misty and I'm just having my magnet hold that there for me. And I'm just going to use some double-sided tape that I have here and I'm going to put it on the back of this little panel that we made just a little bit ago. Okay, so a little tip when you cannot pull off the little sheet of your double-sided tapes, you can just use your weeding tool and it comes right off. Okay, so we'll bring this back in and then this one, I'm just going to center that top and bottom. Okay, so this is card number two. That looks so cute. And so basically, I got a two for one. This, this is how it, this right here became that right there. Two for one. I love two for ones. 
Okay, let's go ahead and wrap this up with card number three, and then we can decide if we need a few embellishments on these cards. Okay, so for card number three, I'm going to try something um, that I've done occasionally in the past. This particular little um, grip mat right here is, well, first of all, it needs to be cleaned, but this is pretty much... Um, I'm waiting on my sticky mats to come in, but this is a standard grip joy mat from the Dollar Tree, and it's pretty much doesn't have a lot of stick left, so sometimes I just use it to help me with my um, elements for my, um, uh, li like, layering my words. So this right here, just going to kind of put this on here. This is my shadow layer, and this is O Christmas Tree, and that's the shadow layer. I am going to leave them on this washi, and I'm going to put glue on there, and then I'm going to place that right here like this. Pull the washi off very, very carefully, and hopefully the washi will play nice and release the um, paper, and then we'll just continue to build the layers. So I've got two of these to do and then the glitter layer that is just kind of its own thing. So let me, and again, I'm just going to use a little bit of glue dots. We don't need a lot of glue. This will allow me to put this on here like this. True test is, is the washi going to play nice? And I'm just pulling this off like transfer tape. Oh, there's that little mishap. I don't like this particular washi tape I have. But there it is. Okay, so there's one layer. Okay, so then we'll do this next layer. This one cut out super nice. Okay, and then we're just going to line this up over the previous layer. Okay, now for the best layer of all, we're gonna have our glitter layer. And I am going to, before I lose it, put that dot to my eye on there. Tweezers. I love this white glitter. It came out of a 6x6 pack of glitter paper, and it is just stunning. So now, I just place that down, taking my time to line everything up, just like so. Okay, then we'll do Christmas. Okay, and I'm just going to use my acrylic block and just press for a minute. Okay, and then I'm just going to bend my mat. There's not very much stick, so this basically just will lift off just like that. And we have sparkly Christmas tree. I love it. Okay, so now we are to the part of the card where we're going to put those three pattern paper trees. Then we just need to weed these out so that we can get these onto the card. I'm just going to kind of dry fit this right now. So, oh, Christmas tree will be right down here. And then we're going to have these three trees going to 
use some more. Again, you can use washi tape, masking tape. So I just want to line up my trees so that they are pretty much the same distance apart and that they kind of match up with the um, Oh Christmas Tree words. So I'm just putting a little piece of tape on the back and then I'm just kind of overlapping these trees. So this one, okay, so here are my three trees and you can see that O Christmas tree spans them pretty much perfectly. So now what I'm gonna do is grab one piece of transfer tape that will go across all of those. Sorry about that, being off camera. Okay, I do not need all of this extra, so I'm gonna cut that off. It will help me with my alignment. And then again, just with my finger, going over the trees themselves. And because I have a lot of black elements or design, um, a lot of black in the design, then if there's any tiny little middles that are missing, I will just use my Cricut pen and kind of draw those little dots in. I'm not gonna stress over that. Okay, and Oh, that is a weird red piece. Okay, so now I do not know why my card keeps sliding around. It is okay. Tell you what, that I'll just put that right there. That's not going to go anywhere. And then I'm going to have so oh Christmas tree be about half an inch from each side. Okay, and then very carefully, I'm just gonna pull back my transfer tape. Perfect, then the last thing we need to do is just place that right there. And again, I don't think that I'm going to do um, dimension on this one. I think I'm just gonna let this be. It's already three layers. But I'm just gonna put some glue down and then put it into place. Okay, so I'm coming in about, oh, almost half an inch on both sides, kind of lining up in the middle under those trees. And okay. And that looks straight. Okay, so this one took a little longer than expected, but oh, it's just so nice. Now, if you wanted to, um, with my pattern paper, I may come back in later and go around this particular tree with a white um, marker because it is just the silhouette of the tree is hard to see. But other than that, this looks great. Okay, so let's grab all three cards and see if we need some embellishments and then decide which one is our favorite. Okay, so I played around with my embellishments and I just I brought in my dewdrops and my enamel dots that I have here. 
And what I came to the conclusion is, is that these just come on a little too strong. I played around with the gold, the black, the red. It just, it just seemed like it was too much. So then I came in with my dew drops here and I've just played around a little bit. And I really think that they add just a touch of elegance without distracting from the rest of the card and without being too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and glue these down and then we can decide what our favorite card of the day is. So hopefully my little wand here will help me out. Okay, and one that is card number one and this is the final card number one I think that looks great and this just adds just a little something without being too much okay so well now let's bring in card number two and I kind of felt the same way it needed a little something but I didn't want to go too much so Okay, so this is card number two. I think that looks great. And I really like that, I really like having put the black card stock back there. I think that's very striking. Okay, let's wrap up card number three. Okay, and this is card number three. I, I just love this sparkly oh Christmas tree. Okay, so let's decide, let's take a look at all of them together and decide if we have a favorite. This is really hard because I really do like all of them. And, oh my goodness. Well, I, you know, I, I'm going to say I think this one is my favorite today because this is just such a creative way to um, come up with pattern paper and use different elements in your card. So let me know down in the comments which one is your favorite for today. Well, I hope that you found this tutorial was helpful, inspiring, and very informative about how you could use your craft stash in new and different ways. Go ahead and hit that like button and share with your crafty friends. And don't forget, I am putting the design space link down in the description for you in case you want to recreate this project yourself. In the meantime, if you have not already subscribed to the channel, we'd love to have you on board and don't forget the notification bell so you know when co new content is posted. So until I see you in the next video, make sure that you enjoy your day, have a great cup of coffee, and until next time, happy crafting. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day and as always, happy crafting.